I have just got to share a, um, the Lord has spoken to me. You know, I've been watching, I was watching the Olympics pretty regularly up until the pairs for figure skating got their gold medal. Let me tell you, when I heard on the news that the Russians won the gold medal in the pairs and that it was done to Jesus Christ superstar, I said, I, I had missed it because we had bad weather and we were getting storm warnings that were interrupting the programming all the time. So I stayed up till three in the morning to watch the replays and it was just an amazing performance. They had a pair of Russian figure skaters that gave I, I love watching in the Winter Olympics I always watch the figure skating. I find that to me that's the best part of the whole Winter Olympics. Maybe it's the artist in me. So I watched this Russian pair. I can't remember their names but they were dazzling. Um, I was so proud of the Russians. I thought, oh, nobody could skate better than that. It was amazing. They did like these triple flips, double flips, holding each other up, like with one arm balancing. And I thought, and I thought the performance was flawless. I thought, wow. I, you know, like I watched the Winter Olympics in Vancouver and there were a lot of people slipping and falling. And this, this in the 2014 Sochi Olympics, I'm seeing some of the best figure skating that I've ever seen in my entire history of watching the Olympics. So I thought, nobody can outdo that. And then they said, now here are the people that are currently in the lead, and they're defending their gold medal. And so they showed a 15-year-old Russian girl with blonde hair and her companion. And they said they'd only been figure skating for less than four years, and they'd only been a pair together. They looked at each other with love in their eyes, and the, the strains to the overture to Jesus Christ Superstar started. And I thought, I got to see this. I said, somehow I knew Jesus was going to speak to me through this. I already knew they, were, they got the gold medal, but I wanted to see the performance they gave that got them the gold medal. Well, I watched them, and it was miraculous. That is the only way to describe it. They moved with such... Brilliance. I mean, and they, they did like these twists that were extremely difficult, and everything was carried out to perfection. It was like watching a brilliant masterpiece of art and dance, in ice skating and dancing on the screen, and it just synchronized beautifully with da 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 la 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 la. I, you know, I actually like some some of the music to Jesus Christ Superstar. I think it's a masterpiece. Or Andrew Lloyd Webber is a genius, and I thought, oh my goodness. I said, Jesus is helping them with their performance. This is incredible. And even the commentators were saying, this is amazing. Flawless execution, doing some of the most difficult things and landing with perfection. The only mistake made through the whole performance was the girl put down her hand one time and they outdid the Russians before them and their performance was described as perfect. And when they were done, they were aware that their performance was that dazzling. And the guy just kind of fell down to the floor and cried. And the girl cried. They said they knew they did well. And they said, they're the gold medal winners by far, man. It was like they slaughtered everyone else with their performance. It was so dazzling. And in my personal opinion, that is the best Olympic gold medal performance that I've ever seen in pairs freestyle for figure skating. And it was like the Lord was saying something to me. He said, Gail, couldn't you tell that I helped them? I said, yeah, you had to. It was, it was miraculous. He says, yes, and I'm going to help you with that book you're writing. He said, he said, what I want you to do. And when I thought about it, I thought, you know, the book I'm writing, the main character is Jesus Christ. The theme of the whole book is Jesus Christ. And I thought, wow, there's a lot of similarities between the book I'm writing and these figure skaters. And Jesus said, when your book is finished, it's going to be just a dazzling, as dazzling a, an accomplishment as in writing as their figure skating was in figure skating. He said, it's, people are going to read your work and they're just going to be wowed by the, by the masterpiece that you're going to create. And what's really funny, I'm still, this is the hardest book I've ever had to write. Jesus Christ is the main character. So it's, 
It's kind of like a writing version of Jesus Christ Superstar. Because I have Satan as the antagonist. And you know how in Jesus Christ Superstar, there's the uh, Jesus Christ where Satan's coming in there taunting Jesus, saying, Jesus, you, you wasted your death on the cross. You're suffering for nothing. Your life is illogical. And I've got kind of Satan like that in my book, too, sort of. I can't tell you the plot. But um, I, I have been, I've been battling in prayer with Jesus, saying, Jesus, how can I make a book about you suspenseful? Everybody knows you're God. Everybody knows you're going to win. Everybody knows nobody can beat God, so how can I have suspense in a book about you? And Jesus said, well, does everybody know whether I'm happy or not? So there's where I'm putting in the suspense. Um, you know, the Bible's not clear on that. We never know the emotions of God all the time. He so often keeps it secret from us. So that's where my book's going to be going really deep. And that's where Jesus Christ Superstar goes deep. Actually, my novel is like a written version of Jesus Christ Superstar. I'm showing the humanity of Christ. Um, you know, I got such a strong impression. So I said, okay, Lord, if my writing's going to be as good a, an accomplishment as theirs was in figure skating, that would be like Nobel Prize literature. I said, but my man told me I already got it, Lord. It's sort of like, you know, it's like almost to the point where it's not like a big deal to me because I already got it. He says, yes. He said, but then other people have gotten the Nobel Prize too, so it's not that outstanding an accomplishment because, you know, because he said, but your book, he said, is going to be one of the greatest books ever written outside of the Bible. I said, oh, said, but you know what, Lord? The impression I got from watch, when I watched them skate, it was almost like it was my book on skates. That's what it was. It was like it was like when they were swelling to the music, I could almost see scenes from my book in their skating. Because my, like I said, Jesus Christ is my main character. It was like Jesus is saying, your book's going to be just like that. Yeah. It's going to be wow. <laughs> I got to admit, I am. Um, I'm working very hard on it. I do one draft just to establish the characters. I do several, about four or five drafts to take out flab to uh, to see to strengthen the voice of the writing, to um, to uh, make sure that I'm trying to keep uh, have some nice surprises in there. And very hard to have suspense with Jesus Christ, but I'm trying to have it. Uh, I'm trying to keep the conflict sharp taking out any any anything in there, any flab, any excess writing, and dialogue tight, prose tight, words exact, expressing exactly what needs to be there. And then I make sure that when I go into each scene that each character has an agenda. And I make sure they follow that agenda or if they go off of it that I can believably transition them off of it. And yet at the same time, I'm trying to make the um, characters believable and interesting. It's very hard. I'm, um, so basically, I have a draft for characterization, a draft for dialogue, a draft for tightening. And I'm just, I'm one of these people that plots as I go. I do my best writing when I plot as I go. I kind of like have a general outline in my head. But when I get into the actual writing, the I let the characters lead. And very often, I have to change the plot sometimes. Because my characters say, I like we can't go this way. So I've written two pretty good, about three solid chapters, uh, uh, the first and second, one in the middle. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the one in the middle, but it looks like I'm doing a really good job of setting up my character, setting up the conflict, and I got to admit, I wasn't too impressed with the first couple drafts, and I changed my opening. I put my chapter two up in chapter one and moved chapter one to chapter two, because I didn't want to have a flashback scene for chapter two. So I said, instead of making that up like a flashback scene, let's move that to chapter one. So I'm playing around with it. But, you know, this reminds me of 1992, which was like two months after Lori McBride raped Brent Spiner. And Brent gave me that three weeks of silence, and I just couldn't make any sense of it. And I ended up going to the funeral of a little girl in November 1992. And when I was there, I know God spoke to me about my relationship with Brent Spiner. You have to understand, at that time, I was a married woman, 
very devout Christian, going to church three times a week. If I missed a service, I considered that like a big sin, and I'd read the Bible from cover to cover several times. And when I was at this service of the funeral of a little girl who died from brain cancer, the pastor preached a message on how how the 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 jewel that arises out of suffering can be such a jewel of love and beauty that it um and it was like Jesus was saying, Gail, the suffering that you and Brent have experienced is as great as the suffering of this little girl and her parents who died of brain cancer. He said, the suffering, and you know, now that I know what Brent went through with Lori McBride, I do believe that, but back then I didn't know this. But I, I sensed it, and he says, and God was saying, I respect what you and Brent have gone through, and I'm going to honor you with an eternal relationship with Brent Spiner. This was before Brent and I were engaged. We're like kind of like engaged to be married right now. But this was before Brent and I got really serious. And I was still married to another person. But Lord, how can that be? Because I'm married and wouldn't it be sin? He didn't give me an answer on that. He just said, just be his friend, Gail. And just take it one day at a time. He said, now is not the time for you and him to be together. But if you will just maintain, he said, I want you to maintain your friendship with him. Keep encouraging him. I want you to be his friend. He said, because the love that I've given you for him and him for you, he said, that love is from me, Gail. Now, Jesus Christ now has actually shown up in 2012 and confirmed that. He said that he picked Brent Spiner for me, but back then, I just believed it. Even though it seemed impossible, I was married. I wasn't planning on getting a divorce. I didn't understand how God would do it, but I believed him. And a very similar thing has happened to me when I watched those figure skaters. Like It's kind of the same feeling that I had when God told me that Brent and I were going to have an eternal marriage. I really believe we're going to have a millennial marriage. Jesus said so. But now he's told me something else. He said, Gail... I know you don't think you're capable of it, but he said, that book you're working on right now is going to be just as dazzling an accomplishment as what those figure skaters did when they were dancing to Jesus Christ Superstar. He said, in fact, I, I guided them to encourage you and inspire you as a writer to make just as great an accomplishment in writing as they did with their figure skating. He said, Gail, you're going to get the gold medal with this, with this book you're writing. He said, and it's going to be the best gold medal ever given for this type of a book. So yeah, I'm going to classify, classify probably as religious fantasy or science fiction, though I don't think it's going to... Um, that's, that's going to be a novel. Jesus told me it's going to be miraculous. Probably like the way Han... You know, when those figure skaters were done skating, they were so... Da they knew they did well. They broke down and cried. I mean, they cried, and the, and the guy went down to the floor and just bowed. It was almost like he was bowing down to God, saying, Thank you, God, for helping us with this performance. And that's kind of like how Handel felt after he wrote his Messiah. He just broke down and cried. He, he said, I did. He said, It was like the, the, the Lord just took over and wrote it for me. And you know what? As I'm working on this book, sometimes I feel like the Lord's kind of like taking over and writing this book for me. He said, Gail, this book, when it's done, it's going to be like, wow, miraculous. So I'm just letting you know, you know what? I don't understand it. And I look at, I can see some problems in the manuscript, but I'm fixing them. But you know what? I believe Jesus. I think he spoke to me through those figure skaters. He said, Gail, I know you've been told you got the Nobel Prize, but you don't really believe it because you haven't really officially gotten it, you know, in the the way most people get it. He said, but with this book, he said, you're really going to get it. He said, this book is going to be miraculous. And I believe Jesus.